The Pat Kenny Show on News Talk with Matter Private Network, Rapid Access Cardiology Clinic, Cherrywood. Your heart is your priority. Cardiac appointments within 24 hours. What a game. Um, wild. Battle start, obviously, for City. Um, in the first half, Pierre with a big, big chance. Um, and that's how it is. It's. Uh, I think we can really describe it as like a, uh, a little bit like a boxing fight. So you have both the arms down for a second and you get a massive knock. <laughs> you can shake a little bit and you, the next knock is coming from the other team. And there's Jurgen Klopp, the Liverpool manager, reflecting on yesterday's draw at the Etihad with uh, Man City leaving still a point between them. Man City um, having a slight edge as they go into the final seven games. Uh, so much sport at the weekend. Uh, Owen Sheen from Off the Ball joins me. Good morning, Owen. Uh, good morning, Pat. It's where to start, really, but we've played Jurgen Klopp, so we'll we'll uh, comment on that because it was a brilliant game. It, it was absolutely outstanding, to be fair. And when you do have a brilliant game, the one thing you're looking for is a really high level of competitiveness at a very base level. The thing is, and the, guy, the st- slight contradiction here is that Manchester City might have felt that they could have been out of sight in the first half with the amount of chances that they had, with the number of opportunities that they created in behind the Liverpool line. But this Liverpool side has fought long and hard over a number of years. And I'd say they would have been very disappointed with that first half performance. And we saw that 46th minute then, Sadio Mane scores the equaliser to bring it to 2 all. No more goals after that. Obviously, Raheem Sterling's effort was was ruled offside. And I think Manchester City, despite creating a couple of those chances, would have been the happier side in the aftermath. We heard Jurgen Klopp there. Pep Guardiola was very happy. I think it's it's fair to say. Uh, And quite jovial in his post-match interviews. So I think he's pretty delighted with how things have gone. They've got a much easier run-in than Liverpool. Liverpool have to play Manchester United and Everton and and Tottenham. Tottenham is a real fixture there that that might uh, concern Liverpool over the next little while. You can really make a case now that Manchester City will win the remaining fixture. Pictures. Mm. Um, looking at Manchester United, uh, we should be talking about how Everton at the bottom of the table uh, de- defeated them, but everyone's talking about Ronaldo's strop instead. Yeah, he slapped the phone out of a fan's hand and uh, stamped on it on the ground going into the tunnel. This is being investigated at the moment. The child's parent uh, has come out and said that the apology was was unacceptable. Ronaldo did suggest that there might be tickets available for the young fan to come watch and play at Old Trafford in the near future, but there's been no official communication. As I say, an investigation is underway and we'll see how that one plays out. With regards to the game itself, I think everybody thought Everton were in big, big trouble last midweek after they got beaten by Burnley. Uh, Burnley themselves felt a defeat at Norwich at the weekend and, and Everton beating United puts them in, it gives them a little bit of a cushion actually Pat as, as things have turned out they were a far better team but they just looked far more interested Manchester United seem to have the feet up they don't seem to care too much about things at the moment because it looks like Tottenham and Chelsea are going to pick up those uh, third and fourth spots and United yeah. themselves feel they don't have a hope Yeah and maybe uh, that's a mark of a very bad team that they can't even get themselves out of bed in the morning uh, such uh, you know given the amount of money they're paid, they couldn't be bothered. That's a huge indictment of the attitude in that uh, dressing room. And perhaps Ronaldo's, you know, his strop is a reflection of his frustration with his own teammates more than anything else because he sets high standards for himself. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Like, this is going to be the really big challenge for, uh, say, if Eric Ten Hag does get confirmed as Manchester United manager, how he manages to change that culture in the dressing room. I think a lot of people have written Ronaldo off as a, as a poor signing in hindsight. I think Harry Maguire has obviously been somebody who's kind of caught a lot of ire of Manchester United fans over the last little while. But you start looking down through even the, 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 the non-poor signings and the, the, the less conspicuous of, of the poor performers this season. And there's quite a lot of average players in that squad, or, or certainly players that have looked average over the last little while. And you look at that game yesterday at the Etihad between Manchester City and Liverpool and you think to yourself how many Manchester United players could play at a level uh, of the performance that we saw yesterday and you'd have to say not many if any would actually be able to get to that level so there's an overhaul that is required at Manchester United mm-hmm. and if you're Eric Ten Hag you have to be insistent that you get time to allow that overhaul to happen. Mm-hmm. Now, in golf, um, so near yet so far, uh, Rory McIlroy on a charge, um, you know, some uh, probably nervousness on the part of uh, Scheffler and missed opportunities for Shane Lowry, certainly on Saturday and indeed yesterday. Yeah, I think Saturday was the big day for Shane Lowry, really, where, where things went awry for him. Things often go against you on the final day at Augusta and his triple bogey obviously was was quite unfortunate on the Sunday and if it wasn't for that if you had a three shots to his uh, to his tally for example he would have come in second place but uh, you can't really go uh, shoulda, woulda, coulda at Augusta the thing is with uh, Scotty Scheffler in the lead it looked like he was under pressure after the 
the first couple of holes. Cameron Smith had, had brought it back to a, an hour enough margin after those first two holes. And then Scotty Scheffler holes out with that chip in off the green on the third hole. And that for me was, was the, the point where Scheffler won this tournament. He said afterwards that he was in tears yesterday morning with the nerves. He said he didn't really feel that he was ready to win this competition. So you can imagine what that would have done for his confidence, chipping in there, holding out as Cameron Smith struggled on that same hole. And really, Pat, like I know Smith finished in the tie for third and McIlroy finished second, but it was match play. It was Smith versus Scheffler. And once Smith fell away, Scheffler was going to be fine. And he four putted on the final green to win the Masters, which is just extraordinary. But that too puts a bit of a gloss on the scoreboard from Rory McIlroy's perspective, because the records will show he finished three strokes off the lead. And despite that outstanding round of 64 yesterday, it never really felt like he was going to be wearing the green jacket last night. OK, the women are in action in rugby, obviously in the Six Nations and also in GAA and the Mead women triumphed. Yeah, this has been one of the stories of the last little while. Only four years ago, you would have had Mead playing in a Division 3 National League final. Now they've won their first ever Division 1 National League final. They won the Division 2 title last year. So they've gone from that to winning the All-Ireland, the Senior All-Ireland last year, to winning the Division 1 title this year. It has been one of the great stories of Irish sport, certainly one of the greatest rises in Irish sport. But they really made hard work of it yesterday and that's down to Donegal uh, Donegal really looked like an excellent team and, and will be a contender this summer because I think once Meath opened up a bit of a gap in the first half you thought they might pull away with the physicality that they have and the score takers they have up front but Donegal kept with them uh, but Meath managed to, to see it out in the end the Division 2 final then went the way of Kerry they beat our man a 112 to 12 point scoreline yeah uh, finally, uh, the romance of the Grand National. I mean, this is like a movie script. You've got an amateur jockey who's retiring. It's his last ride. Um, he's a friend of the Royals. He's a 50 to 1 outsider and he wins the great ma- the race. It's, it's just phenomenal. Yeah, it's like a, a, anything that comes in in a 50 to 1 shot is, is always going to be a, a hell of a story. Sam Whaley Cohen uh, with Noble Yates, of course, and his final ride, as you say, at entry for Emmett Mullins, managed to get the job done. Uh, any second now, Delta Work and Santini came in just behind him. Uh, so I guess the, the, the fact that this jockey goes out in his final career ride on a 50 to 1 shot, he might not have expected that he would have won possibly the, the, the biggest race of them all. But that's exactly what happened. And uh, you don't necessarily see these, these fairy tale esque stories all too much although there is plenty of money associated with the horse as well it must be said yeah but uh, uh, what a day for that family and uh, what a way to end uh, an amateur career which was by the way a very successful Mm. amateur career he's no slouch as an amateur jockey anyway Owen thank you very much for joining us that's Owen Sheen from Off the Ball (laughs) 